Uh, but let's talk about the new patient experience for a moment. Um, have you ever had new patients, again, that come in once and then don't come back for treatment? Of course, it happens to everyone, even the best of us. Are you tracking that? Do you know what your acceptance percentage is? Do you know what your success rate is? And if you're not tracking that, most of us have practice management software that will do that for us if we know how to do it, if we know how to look for that. You do have to put the treatment in the computer first. And the reason I mention that is some of you would probably be appalled to know that there's a lot of people still in the dental industry that don't input treatment plans into the computer until they are done. If we're not putting them in the computer as proposed treatment, then we can't measure our success rate. Okay? The reason we focus on this is we have um, had, I've had ex personal experience with dentists who say they're doing everything right, they're marketing, um, they're getting the new, their new patient numbers are healthy, but their productivity numbers are poor. And when we evaluate it, we find that usually something is broken with the new patient experience. If you're only having 5% of your new patients move forward with treatment, what does that tell you? Big problem. If we're only able to move 5% of your new patients into treatment, that's a problem. Okay, and a lot of times it comes down to the new patient experience. Um, if you have had patients that have failed and have only come in once and never come back, did you ask them why? If you didn't, you've got to get courage. You've got to be willing to ask why. What did we do? How could we have served you better? Would you mind sharing with me why you want to have your x-rays transferred to another doctor? We have to ask why. Sometimes we don't want to hear why, but we have to ask why if you really want to fix the problem. The ostrich head in the sand is not effective when we're trying to provide better treatment. We need to know why. Why did they leave? Okay, we've got to ask that. Okay, this is our working interview. Our new patient experience, this is our chance um, to basically provide solutions that the patient's looking for. Those of us that hire staff, how important is a working interview? Very important. Well, this is our chance. That's what the new patient experience is. And again, we're not going to break down a whole lot, go through a whole lot of information with the new patient experience, but we have for you, um, those of you that are new to the program, does everybody know what the navigator is? Okay, I should ask it a different way. And we will not, I will not make, unlike Ed, I will not make fun of you if you raise your hand. Just kidding, Ed. Um, if, uh, he's the only one that left. <laughs> raise your hand if you don't know what the navigator is. Okay, so there's a few of you. Okay, we have a members only website. Ed has one that's the Dennis Profits members only website, the navigator, okay, where you can um, download ads, you can visit the library and the archives and all that. It's a valuable resource. Um, those of you that are Whitening for Life members, we have our own separate Brilliant Circle Navigator. Some of you may not know that. That's one of the benefits that you have with the Whitening for Life program. It's a completely different website. Instead of DennisProfits.com, it's BrilliantsMembers.com. And on that website, we focus on staff issues, hygiene issues, Whitening for Life, any of those issues. Okay, on that navigator, there is a form that you can download. It's called Rate Your New Patient Experience. And it goes through the 65 points of contact that you have with every new patient. I would suggest if you have not done that before, do that with your team. It's a very valuable exercise. We have 65 ways to give them the wow, or we have 65 ways to um, earn a failing grade, basically, is, is how it works out with the new patient experience. And again, we're not going to talk about everything with the new patient experience, um, but I will talk about five critical components that I see, five things that must go right, or usually it's a deal breaker with the new patient experience. Okay, the first one is the appearance of uh, both the office and the team. And sometimes I'm talking with clients and they'll say, you know, that goes without saying that the appearance of the team is important. I said, no, it has to be said. It really has to be said. It is really an important aspect, one of the critical components to the new patient experience. Um, and let's talk about that for a minute. Again, the patient has, um, you know, visual impressions, yes? What, what is their first visual impression of your office? when they arrive. How many seconds do we have to make a positive impression? Did you know your patients form 11 subliminal ideas about you in the first seven seconds of contact? That's why this is so important. That's why the first visual impression has to be positive. Okay? Um, here's a couple examples of, of you know, people that probably aren't doing a whole lot of high-end dentistry. You know, what, what does that tell you about that office? Small, plain, outdated. 
The minute that patient walks in and forms that impression, they're thinking, uh-oh. I hope the rest of the equipment isn't as outdated as the front of the office. I wonder if their dental um, knowledge is outdated. I wonder if I'm receiving state-of-the-art care because obviously we're not in a state-of-the-art facility. Okay, that's what the patient's thinking. Again, you know, even if it's just a few cosmetic changes, it really doesn't take much to give your practice a facelift. Okay, now not everybody needs to practice in a brand new facility. Not everybody can, but you can still provide a, a pleasing visual impression the moment you walk in the door. Okay, now let's talk for a minute about the team members, right? Um, many of you that have heard me speak before know I'm not a big fan of scrubs. I don't know if you noticed, I wasn't wearing scrubs in the video. I think scrubs, my opinion, is that scrubs give us an excuse for sloppiness. You roll out of bed, throw the hair up, you're in your scrubs. It's like pajamas. It's like working in pajamas all day, right? That's why we love it. But the, the uh, level of professionalism goes down, I think. So although this team looks nice, it's a nice looking team, yes. Um, same here, very pleasant. It doesn't give you the wow factor. And you can get a wow factor. See, I even got a couple wows up front. So, you know, it, it goes without saying. Even if you're wearing scrubs, if you're wearing scrubs, you still can look professional. If they all match, they aren't faded, we're not wearing jackets that are ripped, torn pockets, stained. Okay, and yeah, um, I, I, not my intention to have fingers pointing. They're looking at each other going, mm. <laughs> that's her. No, um, but so you can look good. You can, you can look nice and sharp, but I just, my personal preference is not to work in scrubs. All right, same thing goes for the doctor. Um, the appearance of the doctor, again, sharp, but not the wow. So your team is making these judgments and these assessments of you from the very, very beginning. All right, um, so that's one of the critical components. The second one would be um, determining the chief complaint and providing a resolution. And that's why the interview is so important. We've got to determine what the chief complaint is, why do they pick up the phone and call us, and we need to make sure that we at least provide a resolution or talk about a solution for that issue. Okay, that's critical. All right, some other critical components. The next one um, we're going to be talking about is comfortable treatment in a pleasant environment. How important is that? Well, you already heard from, from um, Sandy how important it was for her that she had comfortable treatment. How important is the environment? Could your patients pick up on the emotions, the tensions that exist within the team? And, you know, it's kind of funny because we practice sometimes forgetting that there's a patient there listening to everything that we're saying about so-and-so in the front office who's really making us mad because yeah, 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 did, did, did. we've got to provide a pleasant environment. What can they hear? What do your patients hear? We need to be, make sure that our environment's comfortable. We've got to be sensitive to what's going on around us that might have a negative per perception, that might give the patients a negative perception about our office. So that's very critical in, in, in of itself. Okay. Um, the, the next thing we're going to talk about is the handoff, um, the relay of information that needs to go from one provider to the other. Sorry, advanced for, past it, but it's going to show up right here. So I'm getting it for you. No, I'm not. There we go. Um, the handoff relay of information in terms of patients can understand. Okay, often we're using far too complicated words, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this now because I'm talking more about team case acceptance and those strategies on Saturday. All right, utilize the new technology, the Dagnodent, intraoral camera, that's also a critical component, and we'll spend more time on that on Saturday as well. So we've got to make sure that we're not just asking the questions, but a verbal handoff in front of the doctor of the patient's chief complaint, the things that we found, the opportunities that we have seen for treatment, that needs to be handed off, and that's missing often in the new patient experience. Okay, so that kind of covers our, our new patient experience, new patient interview critical factors.